Welcome to the first episode of Wellness Collaborative. I'm Dustin Hawken, Wealth Advisor at Omnistar Financial Group, and we have a very special guest, Dr. Casey Jones, President and CEO of Sleep Wellness Wilmington. Dr. Jones has been practicing dentistry for more than a decade, but her passion goes beyond teeth and delves deeply into the whole body. Dr. Jones, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me here. It's such a pleasure to be here. Dr. Jones, I think our viewers might enjoy hearing who Casey Jones was before dentistry. Would you mind sharing for everyone? After graduating from the University of Arizona with a degree in physiological sciences and research experience on sleep apnea, I decided to move to New York City to dance professionally because I never wanted to wonder what if. One year turned into six because, let's face it, when you're chasing your dreams, sometimes it takes a little more time than expected, and sometimes the plan that you thought you had changes a little and can even be a better plan. So what an adventure. I met my husband on a national tour of My Fair Lady along the way. I got to do the original choreography for West Side Story. I got to go to Tokyo. I even traveled on cruise ships and deferred dental school for a year in order to tour the Mediterranean. So Dr. Jones, after practicing dentistry for over a decade and having the opportunity to purchase your own practice, you've decided to go into a little bit of a different path and actually start your own practice. Transitioning from general dentistry to Sleep Wellness. And so tell me a little bit about Sleep Wellness Wilmington and what inspired you to start this practice. Yes. Here's the thing. Most of what we do as dentists doesn't treat the root cause of the problem. And so many of us, including myself, are perfectionists. But nothing that we do to fix the disease process of the mouth, like cavities, bad bite, gum disease, is ever perfect, and we certainly can't do it alone. I started to think of myself more as an oral health and wellness physician and more as a partner with the patient to inspire and empower them to get as healthy as they want to be rather than a dentist. A filling can get decay again if the reason that it happened isn't fixed. So I never assume, and that's why I hand a patient the toothbrush and floss and have them show me what they're doing so that I can coach them on how to do it better. Teeth straightened with braces can go crooked again if the reason isn't addressed for why they went crooked in the first place. So this can be mouth breathing, chronic open mouth posture, even dysfunctional swallowing and the use of the muscles. Here's the other thing. It's all connected and it's never one thing. Oral health affects our overall health. And I knew that from the time that I went to the Arizona School of Dentistry and oral health, but I started to see the connections even more as I started to screen patients for airway dysfunction, and sleep-disordered breathing. So the moment that I have a patient stick their tongue out, and even before I lean them back in the chair, I can see so many signs and symptoms of sleep-disordered breathing. In kids that are higher risk, I often see larger tonsils, stuffy noses, worn teeth from clenching and grinding. That body is trying to open up the airway, and the teeth get in the way. In adults, I see those same worn teeth. I see higher risk for decay in both kids and adults. I also see systemic things like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, thyroid issues. I see more anxiety and depression. I knew there were ways to help children grow into healthier adults by using things like soft mouth guards to help guide that growth and things like myofunctional therapy and breath retraining. But there are all these adults that didn't have the benefit of this knowledge when they were younger, and there's hope for them too. I want to make sure that people understand that there are more options to treat sleep-disordered breathing than just using the CPAP. Sounds like this is very common in children and adults. Can you speak to some of the signs of why people should come and talk to you? Yes, it's fascinating because in Australia, it's actually illegal to prescribe an ADD or ADHD medication to a child without having done a sleep study first because the signs and symptoms are almost identical. So when a child is tired, it looks a little different in a child than it does in an adult. So they're constantly moving around trying to stay awake. And that's where you have that overactive hyper child. They may be having behavior problems because let's face it, if they're tired, they're a little bit grumpy. (laughs) And So they may be struggling in school as well. So what if we were able to do this sleep study first and at least rule that out? You also might see some signs of in children, the head might be tilted back while they're sleeping. They may have noisy breathing or snoring. We see the tooth grinding. We see bedwetting. We see 
them tangle the sheets because they're constantly moving around while they're sleeping and never getting that restful sleep. So, so many signs and symptoms in the children that we can catch. In adults, one of the things that's surprising is so many of these adults have anxiety and depression when they're having sleep disordered breathing because if you're not getting restful sleep, how can you feel resilient? Wow. It's fascinating because as a child, you think about them when they're running all over the place and they're hyper, you feel like they're probably well rested or maybe they do have ADHD or ADD, but um, what you're saying makes total sense if they're trying to stay awake. They need to be bouncing off the walls just the same. Absolutely, Yes. So I'm curious, what percentage of people are undiagnosed and what are some of the other symptoms that you see? Yes. So interestingly enough, depending on which study you look at, 80 to 90 percent of people are undiagnosed. Wow. Isn't that crazy? And there are so many symptoms. So we see acid reflux go hand in hand. We see headaches often, especially in the morning. We see jaw joint pain. We see tooth grinding. We see that anxiety and depression like I talked about, type 2 diabetes, so many things going on. We see kids that have sleep disordered breathing. And thankfully, it's not usually sleep apnea where they're actually stopping breathing. But since this is a progressive disease that starts in childhood and gets worse over time, if we can catch it and correct it in some way at that point and treat it, how exciting is that? Sleep Wellness Wilmington is the only sleep wellness practice in Wilmington. Why do you think it's such an underserved specialty? And and do you find patients receptive to this type of care? I think it's a big conversation to have. And so many of these people are unaware of it as an issue at all. So you have to take them from unaware to aware and constantly meet them where they are. The idea that breathing and sleep could be affecting their overall health and their mental wellness is mind-blowing. The choice to specialize and focus on sleep wellness rather than the general dentistry that I've done for over a decade was hard because I believe that it's all connected and it's never one thing. But I also believe that the breath is at the heart of it all. And every time I tried to turn away from this, I was redirected right back to it. It has been and continues to be a journey. I am continually learning, and as I do, I bring that knowledge to my patients, and I'm continually trying to remove barriers, like working with a medical biller to help patients maximize medical insurance benefits wherever appropriate by creating a membership plan that makes this more accessible to patients. Patients and the wellness community have been so supportive, and I can't wait to see what this grows into as we reimagine what it can look like. So many of the people with sleep disorder breathing are not even completing the first step, which is getting the sleep study to get the diagnosis. Ultimately, they oftentimes don't want to wear a CPAP, and I want them to know that that's not the only solution. And ultimately, they are in control of how they decide to get as well as they would like to be. I see myself as a facilitator in their healing to help connect the dots to give options and to give solutions, to direct them and collaborate with other providers as needed. Sleep disordered breathing and sleep apnea especially is a serious disease. And if left untreated, it's like an explosion of inflammation that affects every system of the body negatively. There are solutions and there is hope. Wow. So these symptoms are serious. They really need to come see you if, if they're not sure what the root cause of the problem is, it might be because they're not sleeping well. As we wrap up, Dr. Jones, what do you want the viewers to know? There are always options, and we want to partner with you or your child's journey towards sleep wellness. Dr. Jones, it's been a pleasure hearing your story and hearing about all the amazing work you're doing in the community. I know you've changed many lives in just a short period of time, and I can't wait to hear how your story unfolds. Thank you to everyone who watched this video. Please find Dr. Jones and Sleep Wellness Wilmington at www.sleepwellnesswilmington.com. Thank you so much for having me. Don't forget to smile and dance and look for the blessings, and I promise you'll see them.